Let's talk a little bit about what I was trying to explain here with this uh, opening description. Uh, so I was trying to say that you have a shaft. Um, so here, here, here's a shaft. And you have rope that is uh, wound around the shaft. So I'm just going to say this wire is rope. And then at the end of the rope, where my hand is, you have a, a mass. Let's say that my hand is like a five pound weight or something. So when I allow this uh, to spin, if there's a five pound weight pulling down on it. It's just going to you know, unravel like that really fast. Uh, and that's what I was trying to get across with that, that statement. So um, if that was the case, how, how would you prevent this from uh, spinning really fast and uh, allowing that, that quote unquote rope to unravel so quickly? I would put a rotary speed damper maybe here or on the outside that would cause some friction, I suppose, that will minimize the speed at which this is being pulled. Yeah, so, uh, it, right, exactly. And exactly where it gets mounted depends on the, the type of damper you're working with and the interfacing geometry around it, but right, exactly, put a rotary damper on there. So, going down to the questions we're going to discuss here, um, what if you wanted to use a rotary damper to control a linear motion instead of a rotational motion. Could you show us what you mean by that? Maybe do a drawing or have something because I don't understand what you mean by linear motion. Sure, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> All right, so a, a rotational motion is like uh, a motor, right? A motor that, that spins a shaft. Got it. Uh, it, it moves in this direction rotationally. And linear motion just means that it moves in this direction. So, like, like right. that. A rotary damper to control linear motion. Could you show me what that would look like? Uh, linear motion on an object. Um, let's see. Okay, so let's pretend that we have... And the reason I ask this is because I can only visualize something like this using a rotary damper. Okay. I don't know how it could potentially be applied to something that's linear motion. Let's say that um, we have a rail here. And then on this rail, we have the carriage. And as we know from our lesson on rails and carriages, this carriage is going to move back and forth. Got it. Linearly. And, and maybe there is, I don't know, a rope coming off this carriage. And it, this rope is being pulled in this direction really hard. So if left alone, the carriage would just move really fast to the right. But we want to dampen that motion. How could we use a rotary damper to do that? What I would do is I would focus on this surface right here, try to put something on that surface so that it causes a little more friction to reduce the speed at which it moves. But I'm thinking, how can I insert a rotary damper there? Is it even possible? Because this this part, the rail on, what is it called? Rail and carriage. Carriage already comes pre-assembled. So I would have to alter a part that's already been proven, basically, uh, off the shelf. So I don't know how. So the answer is you, you have to uh, you have to create a linear interface with your rotational damper. Right? The the rotational damper, uh, a lot of the common ones, you know, they they look like this. <laughs> this is a terrible drawing, but this is uh, the the gear teeth around that damper. Let me just go back to this. Um, okay, so we have gear teeth, right? That go around this damper. So that's what I'm drawing here. So that, that's your rotational element, and then the uh, the linear element. Uh, you could use what's called a, a the it's called a rack and pinion. Uh, a, a rack and pinion. Um, trying to think about where you would commonly see this. Nothing's coming to mind just right off right off the bat. But uh, a rack and pinion is, is a, a gear set, setup where you have. Uh, a, a rack which has teeth like this and then you have a pinion which is just like a spur gear usually 
and it has teeth like that. So this, this pinion rotates, and as it rotates, um, it, it, if it's rotating in, in that direction, it's actually going to you know, translate in, in that direction. Does that make sense? So this will be the rail, basically? Well, this is, it's, it, this is called a rack. There are gear teeth on it. Right. If if this is your if this is your gear right here, this is your pinion on your rack, and it's rotating this way. It's going to move in that direction, rotating that way. I'll move back in the other direction, like that. So how can we apply this to this example you were just showing? Right. So if instead of using our, our a spur gear right here, instead we mount our rotary damper like right there and it's got you know the gear teeth coming off and then down be beneath it we put our uh, our, our rack with teeth like that all that's the way what across. I thought I knew it had to do something on that surface mm -hmm. so that's the answer got yep. it yep okay Uh, why does the dampening effect occur only, or do, does the dampening effect occur in only one direction or both? Um, I have to guess. I think it's both. I've never actually had a chance to play with a rotary speed damper, but just from looking at it, I think it will be in both directions. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's right. Uh, and, and why might that matter to a designer? Um, because, like you were giving the example here of um, pulling the rail and carriage in one direction, mm -hmm. keep in mind that to bring it back to original position is also going to be slower. It's going to take more force. Right. Yeah. And more force sometimes can equate to more fuel, more expensive. Yeah. That's exactly right. So it's a consideration that you need to just keep in mind. Um, and, and I don't know a way around that. I've never seen one-way rotary dampers. I suppose it's possible that they exist, but I've never seen them. Um, and so you just need to keep in mind that if you're going to use one, you're going to get that dampened motion in, in both directions. All right, and I don't think we're finishing it on my notes here. We're good. Yeah. If you found this content helpful, consider enrolling in our signature program at mypipelineacademy.com. Whether you're an individual interested in beginning a new career as a mechanical designer or a company interested in training your new engineering hires, our signature program helps students develop the practical skills they need to be productive mechanical design engineers. Seating is limited. We hope to see you there soon.